Hey everybody, it's Rabbit. Welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be looking at the 2S38, the Russian premium vehicle at 10.0 in the game of War Thunder, and looking at whether or not it is perhaps a little over-tuned for its current battle rating. Now before we get started with the 2S38 specifically, it's important to understand that Russian 10.0 has essentially a pay-to-win lineup. You could throw money at the screen right now, no matter how low level you are, and you could get the T-72 terms, the BMP-2M, the 2S38, and the Su-25, and all of these are really Really good vehicles for this battle rating. But that also means that because anybody, regardless of skill level, can go into this battle rating, a lot of people do with basically no skill or game knowledge. And this results in Russia 10.0 having probably one of the worst teams you will ever find in the entire game. Even if you were to compare this to Germany 5.7 to 6.7, which tends to have a lot of inexperienced players, Russian 10.0 still tends to be really, really bad. Like, you will just be in the middle of the battlefield very early on in the match and look around and find your entire team is dead and has killed basically nothing. So, one thing that we do have to understand is no matter what conclusion we arrive at, because these teams are so god-awful, the 2S38 probably isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and I'm kind of grateful that it's at least not going down in battle rating. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. The low quality of the teams is going to keep this vehicle from moving up in BR almost regardless of what its stats look like. And we're going to kick things off like we normally do, talking about the mobility of the vehicle. The 2S38 can maintain a speed of about 30 to 40 kilometers an hour and get up to it pretty quickly on most terrain types. In the reverse speed, it can go about 20 kilometers an hour, which is pretty good for a Russian tank of this battle rating. Most of them cap at around 6 to 10 kilometers an hour, so that's always pretty nice. It's also noteworthy that the vehicle is pretty lightweight, so it turns and maneuvers reasonably well. However, it's important to remember when you're looking at vehicles like the Leopard 2 or the M1 Abrams, the 2S38 is actually quite sluggish in comparison to those two, at least in terms of top speed both in forward and reverse. So while its mobility is acceptable, it's really not anything to write home about. Going into the protection aspect, this is where the vehicle gets a little interesting because the 2S38 is heavily resistant to heavy machine guns, but it is very weak to auto cannons. It does have a completely unmanned turret, which is a pretty nice feature to have if you can get positions where you can completely hide the turret. However, it does have fairly poor gun depression, so getting into positions where you can completely hide the hull and only poke the turret out, while also having enough depression to actually use those positions, is a little more complicated than it seems like on the surface. Additionally, because of the way the vehicle is laid out, a direct hit to the center of the hull from the direct front or back is likely going to result in a one-hit kill. From the side, the only part that you can consistently take hits is would be to the back of the vehicle, where you only really have things like engines and fuel tanks, which, while it's annoying to get knocked out, won't actually disable you. What this means, for all practical purposes, is that the 2S38 can sometimes survive hits, but it's not terribly consistent about it. And to give some basic tips, both for destroying it and for surviving while you're in one, because the back of the vehicle has so little that's important, using the back of the vehicle to try to bait shots is actually a viable strategy if you're playing as a 2S38. If you're shooting at the 2S38, you should probably try to shoot closer to the center or front of the vehicle. That's always gonna result in the most reliable kills, although sometimes the fuel tank at the front will interfere with this. Additionally, if it's the 2S38 is only poking its turret out from behind cover, if you shoot the right hand side of the turret, there is an ammo feed there, and this can be detonated even by things like dart rounds. So yeah, I've been killed like that numerous times in the 2S38, so it is something to remember, and if you have things like a heat round, a hash round, or even a guided missile, those do result in pretty consistent kills if you land to that side of the turret. Additionally, one thing that doesn't really, it might not seem obvious, is the fact that the vertical cannon drive is also directly in front of this ammo feed. So if you're not hitting the ammo feed, you do often hit that vertical drive, and the vertical drive can take a while to repair. Additionally, while you can kind of sort of work with a bad horizontal drive because you can just maneuver your vehicle left and right, it's a lot harder to work with a damaged vertical drive. So a lot of times, if you can knock out this vertical drive, you can reasonably push the 2S38 because it needs a relatively precise shot to at least damage or destroy most targets. Moving on to the firepower aspect, and this is probably what annoys most people about it, the 2S38 has an auto cannon that will fire around every half a second. This auto cannon has a pretty wide array of ammo, however, in practice, there's only really two types of ammo that I would broadly recommend most players take out. That is the dart and the proximity fuse shell. 
It does have a high explosive round, although in practice there are so few open top vehicles that's battle rating that it's not really worth it, and because your gun fires so fast, you can take out most open top vehicles pretty easily anyway. You also have an APHE round, and originally I did take larger amounts of these just in case I ran into a situation where they were relevant, but usually I found that by the time I f there was a situation where I could use the APHE, I could just fire an extra dart and be perfectly fine. I didn't actually need to switch over to the APHE. So while that round does exist and it's not the worst option in the world, the dart is more generally useful against more opponents. So I would generally advise running the dart and the proximity fuse to deal with aircraft. This is also one of the more interesting aspects of the 2S38 because the 2S38 is an anti-aircraft vehicle. So it has an auto tracker and a proximity fuse for the 57 millimeter. This can take out basically any aircraft you fight at 10.0, and some of them at pretty long ranges. The longest range kill up scored against a helicopter at this point is around 6 kilometers, which is kind of unreasonable when you think about it, but eh. Overall, the vehicle's uh, firepower is reasonably versatile, but this does result in a bit of an issue because with only around 200 millimeters of pen on the dart maximum, you do, against a lot of opponents, especially things like Abrams and Leo 2s, have to aim for fairly specific weak points to actually disable or kill them from the front. And what this will mean is that in the hands of a less experienced player, they won't necessarily know where to aim, and even with a half second reload, it's good, but in the time you need to take two shots, which is about a second, an enemy vehicle can easily just line up a shot center mass and take you out more often than not. So the advantage of the auto cannon is that you can hose people down, but unlike a normal fast firing auto cannon, you do kind of have to know where to aim when you have a half second reload instead of firing six to 800 rounds a minute or something to that effect. And I think this is where the 2S38 as a whole presents a bit of a balance issue in terms of where do you put the vehicle where it makes sense. In the hands of an inexperienced player, this gun is going to be pretty awkward to use unless you're fighting against an enemy that just has no armor whatsoever. If the enemy has even a little bit of armor, or they have a large enough interior volume that you have to hit specific places on the enemy vehicle to knock out things like key crew members or ammunition, then a new player is going to kind of struggle until they start learning all of those things, and they might not even learn all of those things depending on how much time they have to play per week on average. So the 2S38 in the hands of a veteran that knows where to shoot, has good awareness, has good reaction time, has good map positioning, can be absolutely devastating, but in the hands of a brand new player probably seems like it's at least a little underpowered. This is where we get to one of the more unusual parts of the 2S38 is that the real-life 2S38 was adopted into service by the Russian military as an anti-drone platform, a relatively inexpensive way to combat relatively inexpensive drones, with a secondary role providing direct fire infantry support, which is why it has access to things like darts or high explosive, although it may or may not, that's kind of theoretical at this point. But anyway, the idea of adding an anti-aircraft into the game as a light tank gives it a big advantage because light tanks are generally the best class you could have in the game. Light tanks get access to active scouting, they have artillery, they also have access to drones at this battle rating with thermal imaging, which is kind of ironic for an anti-drone system. But it also means that as a light tank, it doesn't have an artificial restriction on its ammo. If you were to look at the Automatique or the Gepard, they have access to high velocity anti-tank rounds, but they can only take so many because they're intended to be anti-air, they're not intended to go around shredding tanks. But because they arbitrarily moved the 2S38 into the light tank role, now the 2S38 can take a full inventory of darts, which wouldn't really make a lot of sense if it were an anti-air. So it has been kind of artificially buffed, and I think that's just because Gaijin weren't really sure they could sell a pure anti-air as a premium, but it still feels like an unusual separating of authenticity just for the sake of marketing and gameplay. A common comparison that gets brought up with the 2S38 is its contemporary, the American Tech Tree at 11.3, the HSTVL. My experience with both vehicles is that the HSTVL has noticeably better mobility in both forward and reverse gears, However, the survivability of both vehicles ends up being roughly equal. Both of them have turrets that are hard to do meaningful damage through, but both of them rarely survive direct hits to the hull. Sometimes they do just because they have a wonky damage model, but in general, they both kind of survive and don't survive in exactly the same situations. The firepower is where the 2S38 really beats the HSTVL pretty handedly though, because the penetration on their shells are very similar. The HSTVL only has access to a dart, it doesn't have access to anything like a proximity fuse. The HSTVL also doesn't have an auto tracker for shooting down aircraft. The HSTVL is also three times slower on its rate of fire. And the HSTVL at 11.3 has to fight significantly worse opponents now, with it, now featuring spall liners. 
uh, in general, if I had to choose between these two vehicles, the mobility on the HST VL is nice, but the gun on the 2S38 is so much better, it's kind of laughable. So I don't think it's a completely inept comparison, but I also think that because this is a premium, you're probably not going to see these two vehicles with equivalent matchmaking just because anybody can buy the 2S38, where you have to earn your way up the entire American tech tree to get an HST VL. In terms of asking, is the 2S38 overpowered? My problem with the 2S38, and my, I have the same issue with the BMP2M, is that both of them present the same fundamental balance issue. They have basically no meaningful durability, and they have weapon systems that can engage anything in the game. So everything can kill them, but they can also kill everything. And it makes them kind of awkward to balance. But the 2S38 ends up being even more awkward because if the 2S38 runs into another auto cannon, it will absolutely get shredded. You have to land your first one or two shots very precisely, or an enemy vehicle with an auto cannon like a Stritz Falling 9040 will just absolutely tear you to pieces. Whereas the BMP2M, because of it has a fast firing auto cannon, tends to be a lot more forgiving against other IFVs. So this means the 2S38 has a very high skill floor and also a very high skill ceiling. So you can do incredibly well if you know what you're doing, but you're probably just going to get housed if you don't know what you're doing. Vehicles like this, you could put at a wide range of battle ratings and basically see exactly the same performance from because you can kill everything, but everything can kill you. So it's really coming down to like player knowledge, map positioning, all that good stuff that's going to be the defining factor. In this respect, however, I do feel that the BMP2M and the 2S38 could afford to go up in battle rating, and a lot of this comes down to how poorly matched most 9.0 and 9.3 lineups are to things like the 2S38. The 2S38 absolutely tears through Leopard 1s so fast it's kind of unreal, because the Leopard 1 has basically nothing from the front in terms of armor that can actually stop the main dart. So two or three hits to the front, you'll absolutely annihilate a Leopard 1. And the Leopard 1 has a very short window in which it basically has to kill you. I really don't think the 2S38 should be fighting Leopard 1s at all because it just seems like such an asymmetric battle every time I watch it. Unless the Leopard 1 just sees the 2S38 and the 2S38 doesn't know it, then the Leopard 1 is basically done. So in my opinion, it should probably go up in VR. However, because of the quality of the teams, it probably won't. And honestly, because of the quality of the teams, no matter how annoying that one good player in a 2S38 is, the 10 bad players in the 2S38 are going to drag them down so much that it's hard for me to say that even as annoying as this vehicle is, that it's going to be a serious problem where it's... But that's just my opinion on the 2S38 specifically and Russian 10.0 in general. I think it could all afford to go up to at least about 10.3 outside of maybe the T72 terms. But let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts on the matter. I always love to read it. And as always, don't commit to shoes.